Hello, this is Greg Gallison, Green Greg is coming to you on the 18th of September, 21. Time on deck, 21, 4200 hours Central Daylight Time. I have to ask you a question. Can General Mark Milley commit treason? Or maybe one or numerous occasions? Well, whatever the case is, he certainly has a lot to count for, maybe a lot of questions to answer. Many of you may know from many months back, many moons ago, I'm not exactly been the greatest uh, member of the fan club of General Mark Milley. In fact, I started getting after him long before a lot of other people did. Early on in my channel, I kind of got onto his case. I called him out, and I've been calling him out quite a lot in a number of my videos. But what all is going on? What is cooking with this General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest ranking member of the United States military? Well, there's a lot to discuss here. Did he commit treason? Did he not commit treason with these so-called phone calls? What about other acts? Well, there's a lot of questions on the board here, and we might not answer them all here tonight, but I'm going to tell you what. There is a lot to be accounted for. But why does this matter to you? It really matters if we're kind of laying low and kind of inviting people that might like to attack us to come into our country and do things. If we are not resolute in our defense of our nation from enemies, foreign and domestic, then we are wide open. And that could lead to great tragic consequences here. All many reasons for which to prep. I've talked to you about many things, many examples of what could happen here. Many reasons of why we ought to prep from things from the outside, things from the inside and from natural occurrences. There are many natural occurrences that could get us in trouble. One of the greatest, the gravest things that could happen is the loss of our power grid. And that, my friends, will be truly catastrophic in this nation. The problem is, is we have so many root causes to bring down our grid that it is mind numbing. And, and, and I'll get more to that. We'll be doing more of those videos because it needs to be addressed because that could be fixed. And yet the elite in our country, they're dragging their heels on, they're fighting against it every step of the way, at least within the power grid industry. And there's a lot of work to be done to make this right. So for that reason, I do call for action, things to do to fix these things so that you know they don't come to pass. And some of the things we could do is put political pressure on situations. There are other things we can do per, uh, uh, nationally, internationally, and personally. We have to prep to protect ourselves personally. I'm not a fear monger, I'm a hope monger because I often bring solutions to the table here. But I bring you these videos as part of my eyes wide open and head on civil series. So you, you know what's coming. Or at least you have some idea. And then moreover, and most importantly, you know this very important to prep right now, especially with the challenges to our supply chain unraveling, which I've covered in many videos. So I bring you videos telling you things like I got videos on my channel about gardening, telling the basic essentials of how to garden, how to do stuff so that you can grow your own food without having to go to the store to buy fertilizers and pesticides and all that junk that you won't be able to find to buy heirloom seeds that you'll be able to plant without having to go to the store to get more seeds because they're hybrid seeds and don't get the same stuff back. I got to go to check my link out the True Leaf Market for good uh, seeds. And yes, it's a good time to plant your fall garden. Good time to go to True Leaf Market. Links below. Also, guys, uh, you really need to prep. A lot of my videos cover things like wild edibles and those are important. Oh yeah, by the way, subscribe to my channel and bang the update notification bell and click on to see those videos on gardening and wild edibles. And my many other things about why you need to prep. And I also got uh, videos about bug out. I got a couple really good bug out videos on my channel. Uh, you may have to search on them. But guys, um, when you think about it, uh, you really need to get your preps moving right now while the supply chain is still operable. It's really under threat. While prices are in the range of something that's still affordable. Got to be big box stores. I don't have videos on that, but I got a special for you right now. A really excellent special, which is, $200 off a three month supply of food that lasts 25 years. You get 2,000 calories a day, far more than most channels will give you. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which will make you a clear winner with this kind of deal. And if you can't handle the three month deal, then get the two month, get the one month deal, which is $50 off. These are awesome deals, guys. Uh, you can get one every month, you can get three months every month, whatever you can afford, uh, and start prepping your supplies up while you can, while they're still available. I really urge you to, to take advantage of that. All that said, now, let's get into this. Um, oh yeah, go to prepwithgreg.com. <laughs> prepwithgreg.com, 
is where you find that great deal. Also, when you go there, there's a big logo where you can go into My Patriot Supply and all their other prepping supplies because uh, they're second to none in terms of availability uh, of uh, selections of, of that long-term food storage and many other prepping supplies, water filtration, air filtration. Yeah, you might need that too. So check it out, guys. Check out my link to My Patriot Supply. I also check out my links to True Leaf Market below. And I'm bringing you some more seed companies. In fact, maybe I'll put a link to one of those in this video. I'm going to already bring them soon. I got a new, uh, uh, new sponsors coming up. Okay, all that said. Let's get back into this. So General Miley allegedly made two phone calls, according to a book by Robert Woodward. You know, Robert Woodward been around for a long time. You know, he was a guy that broke the stuff about Watergate when I was a kid. He's still breaking news. Now he's claiming that in his new book, which is to come out, that um, General Miley made two secret phone calls to uh, China's General Li. Lee's a first name. <laughs> it's got a big long last name. But these phone calls supposedly um, told them that you know we wouldn't attack. And that's, you know, that's within keeping that, hey, we're not going to attack you. That's, you know, uh, there's nothing supposedly wrong with that unless something you know, goes crazy. Um, but the disturbing thing, according to some sources I've heard, is that he went further and told the gen Chinese general that if we do attack, I will warn you ahead of time. It won't be a surprise at that. If that is true, if that was done in a secret, if that's true in any circumstance, but especially on a secret phone call, that is treason. Clear and simple. You don't tell somebody you're attacking. That is that 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 gets your people wiped out. That gets your forces wiped out. Now, suppose he was afraid that President Trump was going to just go berserk and launch a, a surprise attack on the Chinese. Um, whether he's afraid of that or not, I don't know. But whatever the case is, President Trump was actually not only present in, in recent memory that didn't start a war. In fact, he was pulling us out of stuff. And that's what he was elected to do, and that's what he was doing. Um, so uh, the fair thing, though, is that the military and our nation, what makes our republic, democracy, uh, work, and be stable and not turn over to military dictatorship is it has civilian control. And that's written into our constitution. Civilian control, well, <laughs> that's how we establish it. Uh, we have civilian control of our military. And that civilian control is crucial to keeping our uh, government uh, not a military dictatorship. But when a military commander goes around that and sets his own rules, and he's kind of started a de facto coup, he's taking control himself, which is a violation. Of it. Now, is that what he did or not? Now, here's the counterpoints. It's been counterpointed that, well, actually, those calls weren't secret and that he had note takers and representatives and blah, 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 blah there. Okay. But uh, Acting Secretary of Defense Miller says if these calls and allegations is true, it was treason. Miller isn't exactly agreeing. So could there have been the two calls that were coordinated and maybe two other calls? And there's some difference between what uh, the Department of Defense is claiming about these calls and what Woodward wrote and the response of Miller, who said that he did not authorize secret calls. Now, so there's a lot of things in it. This is why I'm saying there's questions to be answered with that. Questions to be answered. We're going to go in now. I'll show you some articles on this. There's real questions to be answered with that. So what is the case? Did he or did he not make secret calls? Were they or were they not in line with what could be considered treasons? Well, the jury is out. And, and hopefully we will find out in time. Maybe, maybe not. You know, some things that we're still lacking answers to, like, you know, what happened with, you know, the out of the letters, didn't he? If you know what I mean. Some things you just don't want to say on this channel. <laughs> this platform. But you know what I mean. I mean, you know, there's just things you got to wonder about. What were they? Who are they? Now, as you know, 
I'm very, I, I was displeased with, with Mark Milley from way back, way back. And eventually I started talking about it because, you know, he showed all those signs of wokeness. You know, one of the things he did early on was he said you know, when the Antifa riots were going on in Washington, D.C., there were actually videos of, it, uh, of the leaders of that movement talking about how to take the White House and do destructive things. I've seen it. You know, that was stuff was out there. For, I don't know if it's still on the Internet or not. But those videos were out there. There was a Zoom call. Some of us on Zoom call leaked it. And those videos were scary. And General Mark Milley blocked the president from using National Guard to guard the White House. That's interesting. That to me, you know, who's supposed to answer to who? What's the chain of command? To me, that was treason. Some people claim that Mark Milley was uh, coordinating with Pelosi from early on back in the days. Again, that would have been going around the chain of command if that's true. So, and I have heard some people claim that was treason to say. Well, there's just a lot of things, like I said, there's many things to be uh, accounted for. But one of the top things to be accounted for in my book is that we do know is that we left a lot of equipment and a lot of people behind in Afghanistan. And some of the people we brought over may not have been the ones that we should have brought over. There in lies a lot to be answered for. Therein is something that really, really gets under my skin. And I am not going to be happy with a general Milley over any of that stuff. Of course, there's also this whole wokeness thing. And he, you know, General Milley defended it before the United States Congress. Oh, well, we got the right to study these things in school. Our military needs to be aware of what the world opinions and blah, blah, blah is. Okay, well, that's true. But studying things and enacting in it within your agencies and department is two different things. The studying of it was never the issue. It's the enactment and how it is enacted and what the consequences are. Therein lies an interesting proposition. And what about all these people that are going to be getting out of the military because they don't want to take the, uh, you know what, and the you know where? You know what I mean? And who are the ones that are mostly of the ain't going there? What's this doing in our military? How's this going to shape our military? Will our military have effectiveness, combat effectiveness? After all this, does it have combat effectiveness now? Gee, we, we tucked our tail between our legs and ran out of Afghanistan all at once, didn't we? Hmm. Well, we know a certain president named O, a couple of administrations back, uh, very radically changed the top military in our nation. He fired a lot of field grade officers, you know, colonel and up, that's field grade, full bird colonel, full bird colonels and generals. He got rid of a lot of them. He changed the military structure to a large degree. You get more in line with his way of thinking. And I guess the president's got a right to do that some part. Trump didn't go back, though, and adjust things. He left that in charge as it was. So this is how you get guys like General Milley floating to the top. Now, <clears throat> my friend, uh, General Kosniak said General Milley was a good general over in Iraq. He said he's afraid that, that somebody got something on him. Maybe, maybe not. I'll give you a little background on Milley. Just a, a, a little snippet of what we're done here. So a lot remains to be seen about this. A lot remains to be answered. I know General Kosniak is not happy with General Milley. I don't know. Uh, of all the prior military people I know, I don't know anybody that's really happy with it. Uh, at least for, for my contacts in the military. And by the way, I am ex-military. I'm a military vet. My family has fought in every American war. Maybe not every little excursion. I don't, we didn't send anybody to Panama. We didn't send anybody <laughs> after Noruega. We didn't send anybody to Grenada. Although I almost went to Grenada myself. If I had stayed in the unit I was in, as I petitioned to do, instead of getting, going to Alaska, which I really wouldn't go to Alaska, but I, but I had reasons I didn't want to stand an army. I actually want to go to the Air Force and become a pilot. And I knew going to Alaska was going to put a, a risk on that. So, and it did. Because it, it got me beyond my cutoff age for the schools I wanted to go through. And it limited me from becoming an Air Force pilot afterwards. I want to go from the Army to the Air Force to become a pilot. Because I want to be a test pilot. 
NAS or not. So um, the fact of the matter is that I would have went to Grenada had I not went to Alaska. Okay, very much. But look, my family has been involved from Revolutionary War outward. My granddad was in World War One. My dad was in World War Two. He got three bronze stars. I was in the army during the Cold War. I almost went to Iran. I know we were packed and ready to go. I was. We were part of the contingencies. Uh, they made a last minute decision and it wasn't us. It was just the Delta Force, and it became a fiasco. I can talk more about that in the future. But you know, I went to uh, my son went to. Iraq during the last Iraq war. All right, so all that said, uh, my older brother was joined during the Vietnam War. I had uncles that served in the Vietnam War, the Korean War, blah, 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 on and on and on. A lot of family has been involved in these wars. So, yeah, I've got a lot of interest in the military, a lot of contacts in the military, and high school I was in ROTC and college. You know, well, you know what I did also, uh, I became a military civil servant when I was in college. When I got out and my first contract was a military contract. And I worked uh, Air Force and Army contracts as a military engineer. So I got quite a bit of experience in this area. You know, I, you know, I believe in defense, but I don't believe in offense uh, unless, unless you need it for defense. So I'm, I'm for peace, very much for peace. Uh, and I think we are over deployed in many ways for our military in places they ought not be. Doing stuff we ought not be doing. But that's a whole other topic. You know, the last guy who wants to go to war is a soldier. But the first guy who will defend his country and gladly do it is a soldier. So I keep all that in mind. Now, let's go back to this. This I don't know if our military dad, you got to wonder about all this wokeness. What does it mean? You know, when we put so much emphasis in that instead of winning our wars, you got to really wonder what our level of preparation is. And there's a reason for all this. There's a reason that we did a huge transfer of weapons to the Taliban. All right, I'm going to show you some articles. Now I'm doing my little diatribe. Let's, let's go in and look at what some other people have to say about these things. Here is the general in question, General Milli Vanilli. Who remembers, who remembers Milli Vanilli? What am I talking about? We've got to have a few years on this. Know that. Yeah. Huge big band, pop band that was rising meteorically until they got caught lip syncing. <laughs> and then they crashed and burned because they were fake. So that's why I like to call Millie, Millie Vanilli. Millie's perfidy is more proof the ruling class could care less about democracy, according to this opinion piece in the New York Post. It's an opinion piece. Written by Bob, excuse me, by Josh Hammer. I went to school with a guy named Bob Hammer. So, <laughs> no, Josh Hammer. Okay. Bob Hammer, maybe you're listening. <laughs> There's some of my high school friends. Uh, so, th th this uh, article is really disturbing and what the uh, writer believes here. And he says this week's in selling relevation of Chairman. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley's alleged late Trump administration era perfidy is one glare uh, fuselade in a years long crusade by America's decrepit ruling class to condemn and ultimately subjugate us deplorables, wrong thinkers, and others with a conservative or traditional worldview. Wow. Wow. That was a big statement. Big statement. Is it true? Mm. And he, he goes further in here to, to uh, talk about a brazen assault on one of the most rudimentary defining features of America's constitutional order and assault that exposes the lie that the ruling class cares one whit about democracy and it invariably claims to cherish. Well, okay, I'm sure a lot of you would have some agreement with that. He's talking about Bob Woodward's book, uh, Peril is the name of it. It's not out yet, but some people have an advanced copies of it and are making various claims and haven't read it. I've not seen the book myself, so I can only relay what other people say, be it true or not, and whether Bob Woodward was right or not. But Bob Woodward's got a pretty darn good track record overall. <clears throat> now, it also hit here specifically, Millie allegedly, I don't know, it does say allegedly. 
convened a rogue meeting with senior military officials in charge of the uh, National Military Command Center and the Pentagon's de facto war room to tell them not to accept military orders from anyone unless he was personally involved. And I see that does thwart the power of the commander in chief. If that is true, then that in itself, whether or not the two phone calls were coordinated, is very problematic constitutionally. In effect, Milley, haunted by hysterical cable news induced nightmares and gave it to delusions of grandeur. You know, this is an opinion piece, mind you. I, I have read an opinion piece. Took impetuous action to cut the commander in chief of the United States Armed Forces. Uh, himself from the formal chain of command, saying that Milley removed the commander in chief, the president of the United States from the chain of command. So if he did that, then uh, that is very atrocious. So these are these are things I say this link to other articles that, that are in here. This is in the New York Post, which is a conservative newspaper. And it is, once again, an opinion piece written by Josh Hammer. So I'm not going to read all this, but look here. How bitterly ironic that the same said left-wingers opposed Trump on essentially fascist or authoritarian grounds while simultaneously preaching about the imperative to save American democracy. And they're the ones who seemingly without fail have taken the defendant of Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman who was taking the blow towards the very definition of democracy. That's a very interesting opinion, guys. What do you think? Uh, look, I'm just reading what the guy's saying. You tell me what you think about it. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you an article that claims that, you know, maybe this wasn't all what it was popped up to be, but then again, maybe it was. <laughs> this is one of the most danging, I'm trying to be careful what I'm saying here, comments of all. In short, as National Review's Dan McLaughlin tweeted to Mark Milley, the General Lee who has been dead for 151 years is a dire threat, but the General Lee who controls, who commands the world's largest army on behalf of a murderous tyranny is a chump. Wow. Is that true? If that's true, as this guy says, this is damning almost beyond words. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yes. So, yeah, this article is definitely sticking out there. Now, of all things, maybe Fox News is defending Millie a little bit here. I was just calling where we're uh, Secretary of State. Acting Secretary of State Christopher Miller uh, is saying that if these this is if these secret calls occurred, that then it was he says it was crazy and he should resign immediately. Talking about Milley, Miller saying Milley should resign, okay? But he said if these calls were true, but then again there were calls apparently that weren't secret. Are they the same calls? See, that's maybe the question before us here. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is the highest ranking officer who has the sole role providing the military specific advice to the president and by law is prohibited from exercising executive authority to command forces. Now that is true. And apparently he may have observed that just with that meeting he had. If that meeting is true. Aside from the phone calls, whatever they were or were not. The chain of command runs from the president to the secretary of defense, not through the chairman. Now that is a true statement. So, yeah, another one on reference allegations, which are included in the book of Harold, co-written by uh, Washington Post with Bob Woodward and Robert Costa. And so we'll go on down through here. So apparently, uh, Miller, uh, Millie made calls in October and again on 8th of January, two days after the uh, January 6th event. So, uh, and let's talk about his assurances that the military of the United States was steady. That's not so problematic, but I've heard it alleged, I haven't read the book, but I've heard it alleged that he actually told uh, the Chinese general that we would tell you if there was an attack coming. 
that is a problem. So Fox News is learning there were about 15, present, 15 people present for calls. So it's the Fox News, but there were multiple note takers present and the calls were both conducted with full knowledge of then Secretary Mark Esper and then acting Secretary Chris Miller, something Miller tonight. So what is the case? Maybe there were calls that maybe uh, what's relayed in, in uh, Bob Woodward's book is different. Maybe there was secret calls in addition to the calls that had the note takers involved. Were they one? Were they the same? Were they uh, done according to protocol or not? That's, see, there's, there's, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Some of you, are, oh yeah, they were the same. Well, do you know that? Why did, why did Woodward say what he said, that they were secret calls? Why did Miller dispute this stuff? See, there is some good questions about the nature of these calls and what they covered and what were their other calls. But, you know, apparently there were note takers in the calls that were at least were conducted in the presence of note takers. So then we should be able to know if it weren't classified what was actually said. Now, all that said, uh, were there other calls? Were there other calls? That's a fair question. Is there something else? How? I don't think uh, General uh, Milley, in the presence of all these note takers, would have told them that, oh, we'll tell you if we're going to attack. That. If he did, wow, he said, President of these people, that's interesting. And it'll be in the notes. But if not, if he did say it, was it in a secret call? How do you answer that? How do we know? I don't know. But see, the thing is, is that Millie actually uh, has never denied this. In fact, he actually kind of defends what he's done. So that makes it even more interesting. But he, uh, so. Here's one saying Butler added, General Milley continues to act and advise within his authority and a lawful tradition of the civilian control of the military and his oath to the Constitution. So there is some dispute about all this. There's some big dispute. So there's a, it's this Japanese, excuse me, Chinese General Lee. What's his last name? Big long Chinese last name. <laughs> all right, guys. So this is the this is a lot of stuff in this article claiming both talk. This article carries both sides, both sides of the argument. And that's, that's, that, that makes it interesting. That's why you have to question what was the case for the phone calls. But that meeting, in my opinion, was unconstitutional. And that's the side where the calls were and were not. That is problematic to me, and so do some other actions. There's another article on it. Let me shut down some of this stuff. I've got memory overload issues going here. It's like you all shut down. I'm probably pleased with everything I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, so that's how bad my memory is. It shot me over my phone. Here we go. So this talks about it here from the insider. Now, this is interesting. General Mark Miller is one of the happiest people at Biden's inauguration. I got to say, I want to point out one thing here based on this. Oh, yeah, here's something. Milley supposed, supposedly said this. The, the, and then he wrote this and had the other members of the Chairman of Chiefs, Joint Chiefs, sign it. The rights of freedom of speech and assembly do not give anyone the right to resort to violent sedition and insurrection. The memo said, yeah, many other memo. That on January 20th, the president elect Biden will be inaugurated and become our 46th commander in chief. Well, okay. Uh, technically, the freedom of speech and assembly do not. I really have to wonder if you know, we ever read the Declaration of Independence. Awesome. Cool. Maybe uh, there's some other things that, that might be warranted at certain times. I'm not saying that's the case at this point in time. No, I don't think so. But guys, maybe we're getting close to some big questions. So I did not advocate violence. Okay, no way. Do I now or ever advocate violence? I'm misinterpreting what I'm saying here. I do think there's peaceful ways to petition and address things. And that's about for the Constitution, by the way. So, anyway, 
What's interesting is this. He took this stuff and had the other members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff sign it. Now, that's not so bad. See, the, the seven generals and one admiral read it over and said they would all sign it. Now, the reason I bring this up is a lot of people believe in the stories that were being told all last year and probably the last three years uh, based on reports from something anonymous thing coming over the internet, uh, some entity that's known by uh, a letter like, you know, let's come out this with a squiggly tail. I know the squiggly tail. What letter is that? Hmm. A lot of people were running around saying, oh, the military is going to put Trump back in power. On what planet are you on? Not this military. Come on. Under, under, who did I say that? Uh, established the uh, field grade officers in the military. <laughs> and I say the president, who's who, 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 a couple administrations back, who who has a letter, looks like that, without a squiggly tail. Mm. So this military was Mark Milley. He's colluding with Pelosi and telling the president he couldn't protect himself in certain rights, but who let the military go in and protect Congress and others, you know, on the other side of the aisle was going to install Trump irregardless. Really? <laughs> I don't, I, well, I had a lot of friends that, that really believed that. They, they were getting mad at me. I mean, spitting mad when I told them that it was impossible. It was preposterous. It wasn't going to happen if they were uh, uh, following stuff that didn't add up. And they would insist on me. Well, I got friends in intelligence and high places in military intelligence, and I know this is true because blah, 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 blah. I said, it's absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. Uh, you know, there were uh, allegedly all these people being arrested. I, I should go out and see them walking around on the street, and yet they were supposed to be in Guantanamo <laughs> or in prison in Australia, or a lot of them were supposedly off to them. Well, guys, you can see these people today. You probably go see them. You got to sit in their driveway and watch them drive in and out of their house. You can go uh, see them, you know, when they go to public events. These people are walking around. They never were arrested. Oh, yeah, somebody believe somebody made robots of them. <laughs> Our robotics and phony technology is not quite there, my friends. <laughs> Although it's far, it's amazing what's happened. I mean, who would have thought? Who would have predicted in not 2019 that? And within two years, over half this nation would be genetic, genetically modified people. Wow. <laughs> okay. But that's small changes in RNA. That's not reinventing whole organisms of human beings. Okay. So many people will believe that. But whatever the case is, um, this is, uh, uh, I know people that still believe the, Stuff coming out from that circle or letter with a squiggly tail. Uh, they're still believing the military is going to take action and reinstall Trump. <laughs> no, not with the command it has now, guys. It's not happening. You know, this whole thing with that movement was it was a psyop against conservatives in America so, because it always said everything's going to control, everything's taken care of. Don't worry, you're pretty ahead. It's all the same, you know. Is we're doing all these awful things, or this, or that, or the other. But don't worry about it. We got it covered. You ain't got to do a darn thing. Well, it kept a lot of patriots from getting involved in political processes and doing things that could have made a difference. Because they were told everything was taken care of. So the PSYOP worked perfectly. And now we have a feeble old president who can't even hardly tie his shoes. He don't know his name half the time. And, you know, he referred to in a major press conference, we only had to remember two other names, uh, creating a, a major new military alliance called Oxus. He couldn't even remember the name of the prime minister of Australia, Scott Morrison. We call him that fellow from down under. Wow. Okay, that's what we got. You voted for it, allegedly. <laughs> hmm. Did you? Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, uh, that's where we're at, guys. So yeah, how did that? How did that? Uh, all those claims by all those guys on YouTube that were talking about that big circular letter with squiggly tail. And somebody's even accusing me of that. Some of my notes. Yeah. Oh, you believe blah 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 blah. 
Boy, you ain't never watched my videos. I never said anything about that. Yikes. Come on, guys. So um, here's what bugs me. This. The Taliban just received the largest international weapons transfer in 50 years. I'm going to have to bring this up in a whole other video, guys. This is huge. This is huge. And whose command was this? And, and it, was this totally accidental? I mean, look at Here's the other biggest weapons transfers in the last 50 years. Which one's the biggest? 2021. Taliban case. Control of Afghanistan with U.S. military equipment worth an estimated 124% of the annual GDP left inside of the country. Wow. Wow. Look at this, guys. And this is what we transferred during the Yom Kippur War to Israel. I mean, guys, look at that. Wow. Wow. This is huge, huge. And why was this done? Did this strengthen America? And we left behind, you know, why wasn't this stuff destroyed? And what about all the Americans left behind over there? And it's more than a few hundred. I'm not even going to read this article today, guys. I'm just, just pointing that out. This is part of my, uh, this is something that Millie needs to answer for. He needs to answer for the people left behind. Why do we do this? What's coming out? What's going to happen? Yeah, I'll be doing more, more uh, videos in the future on that. Now, so I'm going to close this one final thing about Millie. If the uh, Zoom tab will let me go over here. There we are. And we are from Wikipedia. This is pretty standard stuff. Uh, Millie is a couple years, almost two years older than me, not quite, almost. He entered the Army the year after I entered the Army. I was in 79 when I was 19. He entered in 1980. I finished in college. I have yet to go through college. At that point in my life, uh, he became airborne. But something of interest, if you go back to his early life, and you look at where he went to high school, Belmont High School, boom, check this out, guys. I have been told, I don't know, I've never been to Belmont High School, but I've been told this is an ultra liberal, elite woke high school. Now, whether that's the case or not, I do know one thing. It is definitely an elite high school. A high school of, that have only 440 students in grades seven through 12. Now, my graduating class in a small town I grew up in was 200 people. So this is several classes have combined student load of 440 students. And it's located on 32 acres. That's quite a complex for such a small class, guys, especially in the area of Boston. This is my city, guys. So this is a huge campus in Boston, suburb of Boston, Belmont. Huge, huge school. And who goes here? The creme of the creme, the elite. What does this tell you? It definitely tells you that Millie isn't you know, part of us deplorables. <laughs> he does not come from our world or our background. He is definitely, and his parents are both in the military. He is cut from the crust of the elite. So that's maybe why he floated at the top. So they say it floats. So even though my friend, uh, be, Millie was doing a good job in Iraq. And it did uh, make my friend General Krosniak think that he was a good guy back then, but he's, he, Krosniak thought that, he told me that he thought some, somebody had something on him. Maybe that's why he's doing what he's doing. That may or may not be true. That may or may not be true. Whatever the case is, uh, let's go back. Contacts with Chinese general. Well, there's a whole lot in here about that. So this has been updated a lot recently. You can read it for yourself. All you got to do is go to Wikipedia. You can so do your own research on these guys. Don't take my word or anybody else's word on these things. Do your own research. Dig into it. See what you find out about it. And tell me whether or not you like this man. Do you like him? Do you love him? Do you want more of him? Or do you want to see him uh, go bye-bye? I know where I stand on that. I've told you on the past, long before this stuff came out. I was already 
not a friend long before this stuff came out. So let's end this post and stop the share. There we go. Why does this matter? To you, to me, at the top brass of your military services that's in charge of defending your country has other things in mind. Your country is wide open. What would he use the military for? You see the stuff coming out from the FBI and other federal agencies and they're talking about terrorism what tops their list. What do they seem to most worry about according to their own documents? What have you read about that? Hmm. Just asking you, just asking questions. What is it? Hmm. You know, it's, it's been suggested that there's a reason why the Taliban were in charge of, uh, yeah, all the people that were vetted coming through that were supposedly our interpreters and our friends coming back from Afghanistan, they all had to go through the Taliban checkpoints. They were all vetted by the Taliban. A lot of questions about that. All these interpreters going to U.S. military bases, there are, there are interpreters over there. The people I know in those areas just say, none of them speak English. They're lost. They can't speak the language. Who are they? What are they? Don't know. They were vetted by the Taliban to come here. What does it mean? What does it pretend for our future? Have we been left wide open for big misadventure down the road? Hmm. We got more coming up. Just got to figure out how to put this stuff out there before you put it on this platform. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. There's a lot of things you can't see here. <laughs> so I try to be careful. I try to abide by the rules. This platform don't belong to me. It belongs to me on a platform. I'm just a user. I am mean, a creator, co-creator, but I have to operate within the rules if I'm going to stay on this platform. Which means if I'm going to go elsewhere, then I got I then I have to I have freedoms of speech in other platforms. You know, I'm on my cell phone. I'm a member of Lee Wilbarker's KLW World News Network. Check it out. Subscribe. I can say anything I want. I got to get back on and do some coffee pretty soon. I can't elsewhere. But there are other platforms I may go into in the not too distant future. But, you know, hey, YouTube offers a great place because it's a big water and a lot of people come to it. Everybody that's out there on the other platforms has a YouTube channel. Why? Because those other platforms just don't generate that much traffic by themselves. But this platform is a funnel. So this platform is huge. Good or bad. Get better, it is what it is. This is a huge, it's by far bigger than all the rest of them put together. So that's why this platform, you know, it's a valuable platform. All the other creators, no matter where else they go to talk from, they keep this. This is where people go first. It is what it is. So, on this platform, you know, people are always say, Greg, why don't you talk about this? Why don't you talk about people get mad at it? I'm not talking about certain things. Or they think it means I believe this or believe that. Now, maybe I do or maybe I don't. But I can't say it here. Because <laughs> I am on while I'm here. I'm doing my best to abide by the rules of this platform. Because it does belong to a private company and they've got rules. And they tell you in the guidelines what they are. They seem to change. And by the way, I am shadow banned, it seems. It does seem to be the case. Because I do talk about things that isn't their favorite discussion points, <laughs> apparently. Uh, yet I usually get my videos monetized because well, I follow the rules. That's why I follow the rules the best I can. But sometimes it's really hard to know where the, where the borders are. That's the problem. It's really hard to know. It's really hard to know. I mean, when you do get a video, it gets demonetized or this, that, or the other. Um, they'll give you a little cryptic answer, but so generalistic, you really don't know why. It kind of bugs me. I wish I had more. I wish they would tell me what point in the video. Just uh, give me a time stamp for where something was said that was the problem. That would help me a lot, at least knowing I operate this platform. But I got other problems. I got other things I got to worry about. You know, this uh, president that we have has made a ruling that uh, if you don't take this, 
you will not be a, uh, at a federal government or federal contract. My day job is a contract with the federal government. My career is in that. One short exception, I work for a commercial manufacturing company. Of course, they say if your commercial manufacturing company is 100 or more people, same rule applies. The company was pretty close to that. Hmm. So I've either got to accept something I don't want or my career is over. Or find out an exception. Well, I do believe I have rounds for, for, for religious exception and medical. I do believe I have both. Can I claim them or they work? I don't know. But the alternative for me is gates. If I lose my job, these don't get paid. It's called bankruptcy. If I lose my farm, if I lose my place here, I suppose you can keep the place you live on, but will I lose the one in Do I have to choose between this one and the one in Arizona? I don't know. I don't know what it means. I don't, you know, YouTube does not produce a small fraction of my income. Just a little bit. It's just enough to kind of keep the farm market. Many people think I'm getting rich from these ads I'm running. <laughs> wow. You really don't know, do you? But it helps. It does help. And when you guys come here in my live sessions and, and give me donations, that helps too. But I think I may try to do a live session and not just getting really late. Probably this video, when I do a late video like this, yeah, I got it when it stops. YouTube wants to put it in checking. It runs all night long. Oh, we got checking. We'll check. Check is under overtime. We got to make sure there's not some violation. And so that means almost any time I come up late breaking news, it's a day or two before I can post it. So I'm still in checking. I really can't even post it, guys. And that's what happened in my last video. You know, a lot of times you see me, and uh, time on deck, blah, 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 one day, let's wait into the next day before I post it. You wonder, why is that? Just have to get past the platform. But once it goes through all the checking, I don't violate the rules. Try not to. I might occasionally step on there. Well, the problem is I have guests sometimes on my show. There are guests that, that really scare the bejesus out of me. They want to talk about stuff. Talk, Can't talk that on this platform. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I, sometimes I won't even try to monetize it yet because I know they stepped all over it. But sometimes they may say things that would, you know, certain things that you say, if you say it on here, you are bye-bye forever. We don't want to go there. Right. This actually is a good platform. That gives you a lot of opportunities. I don't want to be taken down. Uh, you know, and, and the garden and stuff like that. You know, I do have topics on here that should never, ever be a problem. And this channel actually started out to be a gardening channel. <laughs> but it became a prepping channel as soon as I did a power grid defense video. And my, it was the first video that basically went kind of sort of viral on this channel. And so I had a lot of preppers join. And I mean, we're preppers. So it's okay. That's where the interest is. So I started talking preppers stuff. <laughs> a lot of people go, Greg, I like it better when you just did worm videos. Well, how many videos can you do about worms? You know, I can't do one every day. <laughs> you know, I can do maybe one a week if I had time. But uh, the thing right now, that our world's, but, you know, prepping the video, prepping channels need because our world is in so much peril. Okay. Make this video too long. Right? Makes people not want to watch it. You make it too long. So I'll save this discussion for later. But uh, I'll make care cover this in some live session. I don't know if I'm going to live tonight or not. If I do, you'll probably see that before you see this because this will probably be in checking for hours and hours and hours. And hours. Who knows? But maybe this will be. We'll see. Anyway, it's already late. It's already now at 22 3100 hours Central Daylight Time. 1031 you see what it is. <laughs> All that said, all right, everybody. Good night. God bless. Remember one thing. There is good people in every country of every race, color, and creed, in every hamlet, city, and village. It's these organizations that pit us against each other, that, dehuman, that try to dehumanize the other side or this group or that group in order to advance their agendas for advancing their control. All that's wrong. Like I said, there's good people everywhere. There's also bad people everywhere. I think most people would be good within their heart. You know, a lot of times the bad kind of flows to the top. The people that like control. Control has got an evil aspect to it, really and truly. That's why I like freedom. 
Let's keep it. Let's, you know, once much control is centralized too much, I think there's big problems with that. As Lever Eckman said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now, there are a few exceptions of that. In general, that's a pretty accurate law. Some people say, oh, that just depends on what somebody, it's, it's in somebody's heart and soul to start with. They got the potential for it. Yeah, but what I, who did I say float to the top? You know, people are sociopaths and need to go to the top a lot more than a lot of other people in a lot of cultures. And in dictatorships, the top usually is psychopaths. That's the scary thing. That's where a lot of you people don't understand when you're trying to rationalize what a, a, a dictator in some other country would think how they would react to things. Because their first priority is not their people. Go look at North Korea and see how the people in North Korea are faring. But the leader, and his control is most important. And look at Stalin, look at Mao Zedong. They're not for their people, they're for themselves. Remember that. That's the thing about a dictatorship. These people are not logical. You can't agree with them and negotiate with them on a logical basis. You have to do it on the basis of power and strength. That's why a president who gives mean tweets might be better than a Mr. Feebly Shaky Milk Toast. Maybe, maybe. You need to be able to project power. He wasn't, he was the only president that actually got to go in the Forbidden City in China. Hmm, interesting. Is he the best president? How about Reagan? <laughs> That's just me. Um, now, I actually did a video attacking Trump. I, you know, I, he, in fact, he threw uh, Assange under the bus. Really had me wonder. All right, I said I was going to end this video. I didn't mean to go this long. Remember this light dispels darkness and love dispels hate. Go out and shine your, your love light to the world. But well, I say peace, God bless, and good night. Or maybe good morning. I don't want to get to post this. <laughs> Goodbye.